Hello everyone and welcome to your school technology safety training video for those that are master in educational technology candidates. Uh, my name is Mark Sidarski and I'll be taking you through the video. Let's begin. So why is technology safety and security important? Well, first of all, it protects the school and the district's network. It can protect the identity of, of you and your students. Uh, it can help monitor student internet use while in school uh, or use for um, inappropriate behavior. Uh, misuse of uh, mobile communication devices, uh, i.e. cell phones, uh, iPads, comma, et cetera. Uh, monitor uh, for cyberbullying uh, of students uh, identity theft or data theft, and it will uh, will cover how to steer clear of copyright infringement at the end. So uh, going over inappropriate content. Um, so what is inappropriate content? It could be accidental or intentional website searches by students. Um, and that could be anything from uh, a benign search that takes you to a pornographic website. Uh, or intentional, uh, uh, something of the such. So anything that also could be uh, harmful, like bomb making or violent websites, uh, you know, those that hate-filled websites. Um, uh, the Children Internet uh, Protection Act, uh, or also known as SEPA of 2000, uh, also uh, covered a lot of this. Uh, and uh, out of that, uh, schools were, in order to get funding, uh, had to take action and create uh, their own uh, internet safety policies. Uh, and they usually included uh, the use of uh, filter blocking software uh, to pre access, prevent access to websites uh, that have inappropriate content, the things we were just talking about before, uh, obscene pictures, pornographic, uh, harmful websites, hate speech, comma, et cetera. But is it foolproof? Uh, blocking software is a safeguard, uh, but it can't account for everything. There's always workarounds uh, that you know, hackers and you know, evildoers will uh, try to get by. So it's also up to the instructor or the teacher um, to monitor students' usage of the internet. Uh, while uh, on uh, class time or school time. Uh, for instance, you know, every week or two, you know, perhaps go through the web browsing history of your students to see if they in fact uh, did uh, pick up some bad websites and visited them uh, and maybe have a discussion with them uh, and or their parents, depending on the severity. Um, but, uh, Again, technologies are there, but uh, the teacher also has to play a part. Uh, schools also created acceptable use policies. They're often used by corporations as well, but uh, universities and school districts, uh, K through 12 school districts also have acceptable use policy. Uh, and so essentially there are uh, rules for students, their families and teachers. Uh, they have to abide by um, the district's rules uh, while they're using their systems, whether either at home or uh, on the school property itself. Um, and essentially, for the most part, it'll cover internet browsing, safety, uh, bad behavior, uh, proper use of school computers uh, on and off the site. Uh, for instance, uh, a good example is uh, a professor took a school laptop home. Uh, it was not in the acceptable use policy uh, to that it was allowed to take that off site. Matter of fact, it was prohibited. They took it home, even though they were doing uh, school related work. Uh, at the time, it was uh, brought up and found that it was off site, and the teacher was reprimanded. So violations do, uh, in fact, bring uh, consequences. So it's very important to watch them. Uh, uh, and, you know, your acceptable use policy will vary. It's, it is somewhat subjective, but it'll vary from district to district, uh, school to school, 
uh, college to college. Uh, so going further into network security, uh, VPNs, which are virtual private networks. Uh, so basically the schools will use VPNs to secure their network uh, on and off the site, particularly uh, those that are off site and allows the teachers to access school systems while uh, you're off campus. They can enter grades, uh, they can uh, uh, update their MLS uh, and, uh, you know, contact students uh, off, uh, during the weekend. Uh, it's also secure sensitive information and grades uh, from hackers. Uh, so basically it creates a, a shield uh, on and off site. And uh, when you are off site, you definitely have to log into your school's VPN uh, as per your school's acceptable use policy. So other parts of uh, network security, um, schools and particularly in universities as well, uh, they have login security for all school devices. Um, so it protects the district uh, servers from hackers or the university from hackers. Um, student grades, personal information uh, are much better secured by, uh, and it's also mandated by FERPA. Um, and there's graduated access for users, uh, basically prevents students and teachers from uploading unauthorized software or accidentally uploading a virus. Um, the user profile, this is important, the user profile indicates the level of access to the system available. So anything from a student to a teacher, uh, principal, IT, um, they all have different levels of access. Uh, if a teacher wants to upload some software, you can always have a discussion with your IT coordinator to get permission. Uh, predators, um, they are a threat to the young. Um, predators are often people who attempt to engage or coerce young people into sexual activity. Uh, often, you know, computer and mobile device communication has become uh, the preferred way uh, that these predators lure unsuspecting children and or teenagers uh that desire attention or connection um and one of the tools these predators will use or tactics they become friends at first um adolescents and young people are particularly vulnerable um and often found they're often now found in social media sites and chat rooms um you know hopefully your school's blocking software uh will uh keep this uh, keep your students from getting access while on site, uh, but that's not always the case. And off site, um, they may be able to access that at home. Um, so some behaviors as a teacher you might want to look out for is withdrawn behavior, uh, hiding or deliberately changing a device's screen as you walk by. Uh, it means they're hiding something. So you may want to look into that. Uh, and uh, if a predator situation is discovered, you must contact your local FBI office. So MCDs, mobile, communi mobile communication devices. Many children and most teenagers already have their own device in this day and age. Uh, I'd say most of them do. Um, the ability to record others uh, without their knowledge or permission is uh, a big problem. Uh, there's also a potential for uh, abuse and misuse, and that's very high. Um, some of those pictures and recordings can wind up on social media or other sites. They could cause harm. Uh, those images may also be manipulated in you know, other apps and uh, programs like uh, Photoshop. Um, so they can actually harm a person's reputation. Uh, Another thing is uh, sexting is uh, something you have to look out for where students will set, send naked pictures of them to other students uh, by using their cell phones. Uh, use in cheating, uh, taking pictures of tests and other students' exam answers um, and possibly emailing them to their friends or texting them to their friends. Um, some do schools have banned cell phones uh, and other devices in the past, but it's been problematic. Um, the better way around this 
as uh, for teachers to inform their students of safe usage and instill uh, these policies in their students, um, they have better success. And you can use these tools as uh, learning devices as well to uh, enhance learning, as opposed to just banning them uh, altogether. And the students will be more apt to work with you rather than hide things from you. Cyberbullying. Uh, it often occurs when someone uses their cell phone, internet, social media to make another person feel hurt or embarrassed. Uh, Many teens report they've already experienced this uh, and or maybe even done it to others, uh, sometimes out of revenge. Uh, so for teachers, uh, some, some tips here, try instead uh, to promote some ways uh, of healthy use of MCD, such as you know, keep your computers uh, in highly visible locations uh, so you can see uh, what your students are doing. Uh, again, set these guidelines for cell phone use in class, as we talked about before. Uh, get parents involved in, if possible. Uh, give your students uh, expectations for proper use and consequences if they're not followed. Um, tell children not to respond to cyberbullying. Uh, it would only encourage the bully anyway. Um, hopefully the bully will lose interest. Uh, if the child is being bullied on, bullied on social media or a chat room, uh, the bully can be blocked. So just the act of blocking that person uh, often makes the problem go away to some degree. Um, now, it, it also have to inform the police if bodily harm is threatened. Um, and also be aware of your school policy regarding cyberbullying. Uh, copyright. Copyright laws are generally there to protect the creators of content um, from those who would uh, use that content to try to make money uh, on their on their work. Uh, so that could be artists, writers, uh, anyone who creates any content. Um, and so copyright can last uh, 70 years after a uh, creator's death or 120 years have passed since the creation of the person's work. Uh, for use in education, fair use, uh, along with the TEACH Act of the year 2000, uh, allows, educate, allows educators uh, working in not-for-profit institutions to use, these, use their content in certain ways. Uh, so some example of uh, fair use uh, is uh, reproducing material for students in an educational setting uh, by a not-for-profit. So it's just educational purposes only. Uh, the exact amount of copies uh, have to be made for the number of students in that class. No more. Um, it's always important to give credit uh, to the author at all times. And material can be used in uh, an educational setting for criticism and commentary uh, as well. Um, also, uh, one could get permission from the author for the use, then the copyright law itself uh, it can be bypassed in that sense. However, you, just merely asking for uh, permission is not the same as getting it. Uh, so if you ask for it and have no response, it's, it's, it's the same as the uh, author saying no. So in conclusion, uh, school security is of the utmost importance uh, and student information uh, safety is mandated by law. Uh, always adhere to your school's acceptable use policy uh, be on the lookout for inappropriate content, cyberbullying, and predators. Try to instill good habits in students while using their mobile devices. Uh, again, this makes them uh, more apt to do the right thing uh, rather than hiding from you. Uh, learn and familiarize yourself with the ins and outs of copyright law and fair use policy. Thank you very much. And it is test time, so I'm going to supply you with a link also with this quiz. Uh, and if you get 80% or higher, you will have uh, passed this training. Thank you very much.